In this lecture, you'll learn about unified replication, which allows you to configure both stat mirror and stat vault on the same destination volume to provide both disaster recovery and backup capability. When you create a stat mirror policy, it defaults to type vault. Vault destination volumes can only be used for snap vault restores. They cannot be made rewrite volumes for disaster recovery. So you see here looking at the snap mirror policy create type, the option there is vault, and that is what the default type is if you do not explicitly specify another type. There are other types you can see there. We've got async mirror, strict sync mirror, and sync mirror. And those types, when you configure that as your policy on a destination volume, that's used for DR, for disaster recovery. They do not keep multiple copies of snapshots for backup and restore like Snap Vault does. So you can see them there. We've got our async, type, async mirror, which is obviously used for DP async mirrors. We've got strict sync mirror and sync mirror, which are used for snap mirror synchronous. Okay, so we've talked about the vault type, async mirror, strict sync mirror, and sync mirror. There's one left, one other option, which is mirror vault. That's the one that is used for unified replication. Unified replication does use that snap mirror policy type of mirror vault, and that combines snap mirror DR and also snap vault functionality on the same destination volume. The rest of the configuration is identical to when you're configuring normal snap vault. Unified replication replicates snap mirror DR snapshots to the destination volume in addition to the snap vault snapshots. So if you use one of the DR types, that destination volume can only be used for DR. If you use the vault type, it can only be used for snap vault. But if you use type mirror vault, it can be used for both snap mirror and snap vault. So the benefit you get from using unified replication. The other way that you could do it is for a source volume, you could replicate it to one destination volume for snap mirror and a different destination volume for snap vault. But that would obviously take up more disk space on the destination system, and it would also use up additional bandwidth as well. It's much more efficient to just do the replication to one destination volume that can be used both for DR and for backups and restores as well. So looking at the configuration, and as I said, the configuration is exactly the same as it is for Snap Vault. Just the one difference is you specify a Snap Mirror policy type of Mirror Vault rather than Vault. So the configuration here, you're going to see it's exactly the same as when we did the configuration for Snap Vault. So I'll go through this pretty quickly here. So we have to do the usual initial steps, which is licensing Snap Mirror on both sides creating our intercluster lifts on every node on both clusters, peering the clusters, and then peering the SVMs. Once we have done that, because we're doing both snap vault and also snap mirror, we need to do the snap vault configuration the same as before. So we're going to have our snapshot policy on the primary source cluster. I'm using the exactly the same example as before here. So on the source side, we say snapshot policy create. In this example, it's for vServer department A. We've called the policy volume three. We have to say enabled true. And then we've got schedule one hourly, count one five. So we're going to take five hourly snapshots on the source volume, and we're going to keep the last five of those. We don't want to replicate those across to the snap vault system, so we have not specified a label on there. Next, we're also going to take daily snapshots. We're going to keep the last five of those. We do want to replicate those across, so we've put a snap mirror label on there of daily. And you can see here we've got schedule one and count one. That ties those two together. And schedule two, count two, and snap mirror label two. That ties those three attributes there together. And then finally, we're also going to take weekly snapshots. So we've got schedule three weekly, count three two. We're going to keep the last two of those. And snap mirror label three weekly, we're going to put the snap mirror label of weekly on there because we are going to pull those across to the snap vault system. Then we need to apply it to the source volume. 
So we say volume modify v server department A, the volume is vol 3, and we say snapshot policy vol 3. So that is all configured on the source cluster. Next, we're ready to move over to the destination cluster, and we are configuring a custom policy here to specify which snapshots we're going to pull across and how many of them we are going to keep. So on the destination secondary cluster, we say snap mirror policy create. V server is department A underscore M is my destination SVM. Policy is vol three. And now the one difference to the snap vault policy is we say type mirror vault. So if we don't put that in, it's going to default to type vault and it's only going to use the snap vault um, snapshots there. It's not going to have snap mirror snapshots for the DR. We want to have both. So we've said type mirror vault for both. Then I need to specify the snapshots that I'm going to pull over for my snap vault backups. So I say snap mirror policy add rule v server department a underscore m policy vol3 so i'm adding a rule to the policy that i just created i say snap mirror label daily keep 31 so every time it connects to the source cluster it's going to look in the source volume for snapshots that have got the label of daily on there when it finds a new one it will pull it across and it's going to keep them for 31 days so we're keeping them for longer on the destination side then we've got snap mirror policy add rule for vserver department a underscore m policy vol3 again now we're looking for snapshots with a snap mirror label of weekly and we're going to keep 52 of those so we're keeping a lot more snapshots on the destination snap vault system for our long-term backups you can also take a snapshot directly on the destination cluster if you don't want to have that snapshot on the source side so here we're going to take a snapshot once a year as well. We're going to call that yearly. Because there's not a default cron schedule for yearly, I need to add that as a custom cron schedule. So I say job schedule cron create. I've named it yearly. And I say the time that this is going to occur at is in December the 31st and at one minute to midnight. So it's going to happen just that one time a year just before a new year falls. Then I'm going to add that to my snap mirror policy that I already created. So I say snap mirror policy add rule. It was for vserver department AM. The policy is vol3. And I say snap mirror label yearly, keep seven, and the schedule is yearly. So that's to take a snapshot directly on the destination cluster. You use the schedule command here as part of your snap mirror policy add rule. So the yearly snapshots are only going to be on the destination volume not on the source volume because i don't want to keep a snapshot for a year on the source side because that would start taking up too much space okay next up i'm ready to create and initialize the volume mirror relationship so on the secondary destination side i need to create the volume first so i've got volume create the v server was department a underscore m the volume i'm creating it here and naming it volume three underscore m the aggregate I'm putting it in is aggregate one, I specify the size, and then I say type DP. So exactly the same command as if you were configuring normal snap mirror or snap vault. Then I create the mirror again on the secondary cluster side. I say snap mirror create. The destination path is department A underscore M is the destination SVM, and the destination volume in that SVM is vol3 underscore M. The source path is svm of department a on the source cluster and the volume name is vol3 the type is xdp and my policy is vol3 so here i'm specifying a unified replication policy rather than a snap vault or snap mirror policy and schedule daily so it is going to check every day for snapshots to pull across it's also going to do the replication for dr daily here as well because i've said the schedule of daily then I need to do the initial baseline transfer. So I've got snap mirror initialized destination path department A underscore M and it's going to vol3 underscore M. So you can see the commands there are exactly the same as if I was configuring standard snap mirror or snap vault. The only difference is when I created the policy. 
So going back again, when I created the policy here, I specified type mirror vault. That is the only difference that you need to configure for unified replication. Everything else is exactly the same as a standard snap vault policy. You can alternatively, again, use the snap mirror protect command rather than using the three separate commands of volume create and then snap mirror create and then snap mirror initialize. So snap mirror protect will do all of those three together in a single command. The same syntax as before, we've got snap mirror protect, specify the path list, so the source volumes that you want to protect, the destination V server you want to replicate to, the policy you're using, the schedule, whether you want auto initialize to happen or not. So if you want to do the initial baseline transfer now, if you say false, you would have to do it later. And then destination volume prefix and or destination volume suffix. So again, I'll use the same example. If we have got three volumes on the source side of vol one, vol two, and vol three, and we want to replicate all of those, we can do that in a single command by specifying a path list of the SVM they're in, and then colon, and then say vol. Because they all start with vol, that will match all three of them. We could then configure a destination volume suffix of underscore DST for destination, and that will create vol1 underscore DST, vol2 underscore DST, and vol3 underscore DST. And it will protect all three of the volumes with a unified replication policy. To restore data with the snap vault functionality, the commands are exactly the same again as when we were using snap vault. So the command is snap mirror restore, specify the source path and the destination path and the snapshot. If you do that, it will restore the entire volume. You can also restore individual files, folders, and LUNs. To do that, it's the same command, but you specify a file list on the end. When you do the restore, that is done on the cluster that you are doing the restore to. So when you're configuring the replication, that's done on the destination side that you're replicating to. When you're doing a restore, you configure the command on the system that you are restoring to. And then finally, for failover for the DR, again, exactly the same commands as for standard snap mirror. On the destination cluster, you say snap mirror key S to pause any updates after that, and then snap mirror break to break the snap mirror relationship and make the destination side read and write. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.